The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Aragon LQ Pre-Harvest Weed Control, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to Soybean School. Today we're talking weed control, specifically how to tackle a growing problem in Ontario, herbicide-resistant water hemp. And I can think of no one who knows more about this subject than my guest today, um, University of Guelph, Ridgetown Campus, weed scientist, Peter Sycama. Peter, thanks for stopping by. Hey, you're most welcome. Um, Now, Peter, you did some great reports on water hemp this summer for the Ontario Diagnostic Day series. Can you describe um, herbicide-resistant water hemp for us? When farmers find it in their fields, what are they up against? Yeah, and so every field is different, Bernard. And so the uh, resistance can be just uh, resistance to glyphosate. And then you could have other populations that are resistant to the group two, group five, group nine, and 14 herbicides. And it's any combination of those four different herbicide families that could occur on any farm in Ontario with water hemp. Talk about, I guess, the weed itself, uh, Peter, a highly adaptable, um, a long emergence pattern. I mean, it's it's not something you just go spray and, and take care of. Yeah, uh, water hemp is, a, is an amazing weed. It's a dioecious species. So that means that you have separate male and female plants. And what's really important about that in terms of herbicide resistance is that you have huge genetic diversity within water hemp. And because of that, you have the potential for genes that confer resistance to a wide variety of herbicide modes of action. Yeah. Hey, talk about, I guess, that resistance now. Um, You know, glyphosate-resistant water hemp first identified in Ontario 24 2014, how was it spread? Give us a snapshot. Yeah, and so I think water hemp moves in various ways across the uh, province. Uh, You're absolutely right. All that we knew in 2014, that was that there was one field in the southwestern corner of Lambton County with glyphosate-resistant water hemp. In the six growing seasons, so from 2014 to 2019, uh, glyphosate-resistant water hemp is now found in 13 Ontario counties. And it is uh, suggested or thought that it moves on contaminated equipment. Really interesting, one of the fields where we found glyphosate-resistant water hemp was adjacent to a John Deere dealership and where they brought in combines to be repaired and cleaned, where they washed off the cement pad adjacent to the John Deere dealership, that's where the neighboring farmer found glyphosate-resistant water hemp. Hmm. I think uh, we have pictures where we're very confident that water hemp was introduced into new fields on contaminated equipment, whether tillage equipment or on uh, combines, Really interesting, there's a field along the Grand River where the only place where there's water hemp on the farm is where the Grand River overflowed its banks and it deposited water hemp in the uh, soybean field. Uh, In addition to that, in Lambton County, the water hemp that occurs on commercial farms now is almost genetically identical to the water hemp that's been in Ontario for the last century. And something happened in the last uh, 20 years. There's been uh, new biotypes that have evolved that are uh, adaptable to our corn and soybean production system. And these are now found on uh, farms in Lambton County. And the last way is uh, really interesting. The water hemp in Essex County is almost genetically identical to the water hemp in Missouri. And so that raises the question, how did water hemp from from Missouri end up in Ontario? And nobody knows the answer for sure, 
But one of the possibilities is, is that it's just moved with migratory waterfowl. They ingest water hemp seed in Missouri, and as they fly north and east uh, during the spring, they deposit it in fields in Ontario, and that's how we got that uh, problem. Peter, what's the uh, what's the yield impact from a soybean perspective? You know, what's the, what's that average yield impact in soybeans? Yeah, and so uh, water hemp in the trials that we've com completed in Ontario, we have 36 experiments that we did over the past six growing seasons. The average yield loss in soybean is 43%. However, I do want to stress that in the most competitive environments, the highest yield loss that we documented on a commercial farm in Ontario is 93%. Wow. Wow. Peter, let's talk uh, control strategy here. You know, based on your research, you've done a lot of it. What are the leading herbicide control options? Yeah. And so the first point that I would make, uh, Bernard, is that I think if a farmer in Ontario has water hemp on their farm, they should plan to use a two-pass weed control program and what I mean by that is they should put down their best soil applied herbicide and then be prepared to manage any weed escapes that may occur. In the research that we've conducted in Ontario, herbicides like Bifecta, Boundary, Voltaire, and Authority Supreme, they have provided anywhere from 81 to 84% control on average. And then uh, Triactor and Fierce are the two best herbicides, and they provided 90 and 92% control. So then if you're growing Identity Preserved or Roundup Ready Soybean, you could come back with a post-emergence application of Reflex, Blazer, or Hurricane. If you're growing Extend Soybean, you could come back with a post-emergence application of uh, Dicamba, However, I do want to stress, if you choose to apply dicamba post-emergence, growers have to be really cautious in terms of off-target movement to sensitive crops and adjacent fields. And finally, if you are growing enlist soybean, you can put on a post-application of either Liberty or Enlist uh, Duo to clean up any uh, weed escapes. And in the work that we've done, Bernard, where farmers have used a two-pass weed control program, we're approaching near perfect control of water hemp in soybean in Ontario. Final question, Peter. Um, you know, what role can best, manage best management practices play in helping farmers uh, win that war against water hemp? Yeah, and I think the first step to... Um, reduce the incidence of uh, herbicide resistant weeds in the province and specifically glyphosate resistant weeds is farmers need to introduce more diversity into their weed and crop management programs. I think the basis for introducing diversity into your programs is having a diverse crop rotation. And I would suggest that there should be a minimum of three crops in the rotation such as corn, soybean, and wheat. I think that in soybean, you could consider narrow row widths. Uh, in addition to that, I think uh, planting cover crops after winter wheat harvest would be a good idea in terms of suppressing the growth of water hemp after harvesting uh, winter wheat to prevent weed seed return to the soil. And I think that Ontario farmers should implement and use multiple herbicide modes of action over time. We are conducting a nine-year study where we're trying to incorporate all of those aspects into a water hemp uh, management program. And in that uh, study where we have a corn, soybean, wheat rotation, we have seven different effective modes of action in that uh, program. So I think uh, we have the tools for managing uh, multiple herbicide resistant water hemp in the province of Ontario. Well, Peter, hey, some great work. Always great to have you on uh, Real Agriculture to talk about your work and uh, we really appreciate it. Hopefully uh, we'll catch up with you in the new year. 
Thank you very much, Bernard, and all the best to you and your family. Thank you, sir.